Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome to House Hunting, which is a horror game where you're house hunting, and then you find out home prices are way too expensive, and also they're deadly for some reason because it's a horror game. So, uh, quick note, this is part of the John Doe universe, which is a uh, another horror game that I've played. And if you've seen the original John Doe, John Doe actually got a major update. I haven't played that update yet, though. Ugh, what a long bus ride. I'm glad I'm finally here. You look around yourself, taking in the surroundings. We begin the nauseating aroma of bus exhaust and oil. Nice. Well, there's obviously not much to look at here at the Grey Horse bus station. I'm sure the rest of the city is beautiful. Just like the brochure said, no it isn't. Your entire city is a giant art piece. Hopefully the apartment company was honest about having my new place ready for the move-in. Quickly grabbing your modest baggage from your, the bag claim, you string your clothes and walk towards the nearest visitor center. Hmm, there's a cafe nearby. I'm starving right now and it'd be a nice pick-me-up. I also kind of wanted to see the city. I could just wander around a little bit. I'm also pretty tired. Maybe I should just head to my apartment. Choices! Maybe just head straight to the apartment? Sure, why not? I'm so beat from the six-hour bus drive, I should just head to the apartments and order a pizza or something. The classic move in food. As you approach your new apartment complex, you feel warm in your heart and can't help thinking about how you're finally getting a much-needed change in your life. You take a deep breath in, taking the cool, clean air of the valley, and step forward to find your apartment number. Ah, here it is. This is so exciting. I've been wanting my own apartment for a while. You go to turn the handle. Huh? The door doesn't budge as you twist the handle. You try again. It's locked. You see, your problem is you assumed you found yourself an affordable apartment. That's a lie. And now you're just waking up to that. What the heck? They said the door would be unlocked when I got here. I should give them a call. Before you can pull out your phone, a very tall older gentleman stands directly in front of you, towering over you and staring directly into your eyes. Uh, hello? Can I help you, sir? And he stares a moment longer before adjusting his blood-red blazer, flashing his shockingly white teeth at you. It's a smile that makes you a little nauseous, but you're not sure why. You're new in town, lost and wandering. You need a place to call your own. The way he talks surprised you. His voice was so smooth as if he's given his same speech a million times. Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Mason Talo, number one realtor in all the uncanny valley. I can help you find your dream home today. He quickly snatched a business card from his breast pocket only for a never identical business card to pop up and take its place. He offered it out to you, his hand coming uncomfortably close to your face, making you flinch back a bit before taking it from him. Never trust a real estate agent. Give me a call and we can get you set up in a new house today, guaranteed. Oh, thank you, but I already have an apartment set up to move in. I'm just having a little issue today, is all. This person actually found a house! My plan is ruined! <laughs> That's quite alright. I'm sure you'll be giving me a call. I am the number one realtor in all of the Uncanny Valley, after all. I have never had a disappointed buyer. You'll love the house I found just for you. I'll be waiting. The strange realtor walked away before you could get a chance to argue. His long legs carrying him faster than you expected. Now we're on to real estate agent horror. <laughs> we go on for all the things, right? What an odd man. Well, no harm holding on to his card for if the apartment falls through. You quickly pocket the card and pull out your cell phone. Hello, Uncanny Valley Apartment Hunters. How may we help you? Uh, hello. I'm supposed to move in today, but my apartment is locked. 
You can hear paper shuffling on the other side of the line. Followed up what you can only describe as the roars of an animal you can't place. Ah, uh, yes, uh, you. We had a little issue with your apartment, and it won't be ready until tomorrow. Uh, our apologies. Oh, no. What am I going to do now? What could the issue possibly be? Maybe you could pry for a more better explanation. But you also don't want to be rude. Give up or persist? Persist. What do you mean something happened? I don't really have anywhere else to go. You hear the clicking of what sounds like a typewriter for a few moments and a loud annoyed sigh. Sigh. We've been having some issues. We, we, you wait for an elaboration, but you're made of a long, awkward silence instead. Um, yeah, what are the issues? More typing and paper tearing. Is that a blunder? I think you're going out of business, buddy. Your apartment will be ready tomorrow. Do you need anything else, you? You sigh to feed and look around you. There's nothing much left to really do in this situation besides look for a hotel. This reminds me of the time... Oh, look, the paper tearing. Reminds me of the time I indirectly, as a kid, helped a uh, school embezzle funds illegally. No, that's it. Thank you. Please call me as soon as my apartment is ready. Of course. Good day. Because I used to sometimes, like, help out in, like, the main office. And they was always having me, like, shit a ton of papers. And I remember, like, on the papers, vaguely, they were, they were, like, financial documents. And, like, you know, a couple months later, the school, like, gets hit by the cops and the, the state. <laughs> They're embezzling money. Funny stuff. With that, they hung up and left you standing in front of the building you should have already been in by now. Shoot. Now what? You shove your hands in your pockets absentmindedly? They feel the hard piece of paper crunch against your fist. You pull the paper out of your pocket and suddenly remember Maison. Yeah, right. I was lucky to afford this apartment. I can't buy a house right now. Still, it wouldn't hurt to call and see what's available. We just look for a hotel. No issues. Sure, just skip it. Just go right to the hotel. We're gonna live. We're gonna live the first run. You decide it's probably a better idea to go find an unreasonably priced hotel than waste your time with realtors. Like, how can they possibly get me now? I'm not even going to the place. You find yourself in what seems to be the heart of the city. The many buildings and stores almost feeling as if they're closing in around you. Alright, hotel, hotel. Downtown areas usually have hotels, right? Are you following me? Lost? Lonely? You didn't call me, you. Whoa, Maison. Were you following me? How silly. No, no, my dear buyer, I am simply that good, number one realtor in all the Uncanny Valley after all. I'm very sure you remember this, right? You clearly need a place to go, and I have the perfect house, just waiting for you to be inside it. Uh, weird? No, that's pretty normal for aggressive agents, actually. How do you know my name? An aggressive agent. He just stared at you, clearly refusing the answer. Listen, I'm just looking for a hotel, you know. Hotel, California. You make sure to really announce the word hotel to him as if he didn't understand. You really wanted to get the seller off your back. Hmm, a hotel. The tall gentleman seemed to be struggling with processing what you told him. Something was even creepier when he frowned than when he smiled, which was shocking. Oh, oh my dear, poor buyer. You are so confused and lost, I see. He was not listening. Listen, just come with me. Take a look around this lovely free bedroom home with me. If you don't absolutely fall in love with it, I will personally pay for your hotel stay while I search for a house that suits your... specific needs. He didn't like how his last sentence was almost a purr. But if he was being honest about paying for the hotel, what did you have to lose except your life? You could just humor him for an hour and tell him no when he's done with his little speech. <sighs> Alright, Mason. You want me down. I can look at this house you found for me.
Perfect, perfect. I can assure you, you will love this two grand domicile that is just starving to meet you. Uh. Cool. You're about to question his choice of words when you're abruptly cut off from the sensation of a long, bony hand ripping on your forearm, almost dragging you along with him as he headed towards God knows where. Maybe you made a mistake. You did. If only you had been walking for an hour in awkward silence, struggling to keep up with the strange realtor's long and fast strides, when he so finally stopped abruptly, forcing the bump roughly into his back. That's a nice place. Oh, they got... got... Three-car garage. He didn't budge at all from the force of your weight against his back. You jump back, trying to hide the red of your cheeks from your embarrassment. Oh, sorry. You looked over at the huge house before you, the for sale sign glaringly obvious in the curve. This is the house. Oh, do you see something you like after all? I'm not surprised. This house is in very good condition. You don't think I can seriously afford this place, right? This place is huge. Yeah, that'd be about four million. In that location, I'm assuming. <laughs> Quite the flatterer, I see. I assure you, the price is very reasonable and I'm willing to haggle greatly. The seller is simply looking to sell fast. You look back at the house. Something had to be up with this. It was sounding more and more fishy the more this realtor talked it up. Okay, what's the catch then? Catch? Yeah, come on, man. Why is the seller trying to get rid of this beautiful house? Did someone die in it or something? I mean, no one's denying it. Of course not. His paws worried you greatly. But you're pretty sure you read somewhere that realtors had to disclose that information to you or something, right? Eh. Simply come inside and take a look around. No strings attached. You'll love it when you see the insides. You won't be able to walk away from a deal like this. Dear Bob, you won't be able to walk away at all. Uh, who am I kidding? You're, you're gonna die in there. Just just get in there. Just go and die. But something definitely felt wrong about all this. You were already here. Leave. You just can't shake your nervous feeling and decide to be better to get out of here. You're sure you'll understand you weren't planning to buy it anyway. Listen, Mr. Tallow, I, I think we have to drop out the walkthrough. I don't want to lead you on to a sale after all. I'm, I'm sure you'll find someone who will love this place. Yeah, that's right. I live. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to go now. I'm so sorry for wasting your time. I will hold on to your card, so I will for sure call you when I'm ready to buy. I, I appreciate your time. Mason just stared at you for a few moments before walking backwards towards the house. To be carefully down the concrete path and through the door, his head peeking out for a few moments to sadly plead to you before disappearing. You could have sworn you heard a low, rumbling growl emitting from the house before you left. That's right! It felt like hours before you finally made your way back to the city. You were so tired you had to find a hotel as soon as possible. You jumped at the sound of your phone ringing suddenly in your pocket, and quickly answered it, fumbling with the touchscreen. Ring, ring, ring. Hello? You... Uh, yes, that's me. How can I help you? Oh, that's our name! It's you! Uh, yeah, so uh, we saw that little issue we we're having, so if you'd like to go ahead and go to the apartment, it's all ready for you. Oh my gosh, really? That's great news. Thank you. I'll head right there. We look forward to your business, and remember, Uncanny Valley Apartment Company is dedicated to finding the perfect home for you, a realtor free guarantee since 1992. Click. Am I gonna die anyways? You have time to think about their odd tagline. You were just happy you could finally go home and rest your weary head and lay off your poor sore feet. Oh no. You were just excited to get home. You rushed through the streets of the city. You couldn't wait to just get to sleep. It's been one long day. You lived. Doe-eyed. So, I guess we'll go inside. Alright, let's go check it out then. Don't get your hopes up, though, Mr. Tallow. Oh, I have no doubt that you'll be instantly attached, attacked, attached, when you see it. He roughly grabs your arm again, his sharp fingertips digging roughly as you follow him up the concrete walkway to the bright red door. 
How, uh, how long have you been searching for a buyer for this place? He said to ask to line the mood up a little. You know, as my son staring intently ahead to the door, his eyes looking almost hungry as he ushers you through the door into the living room. Oh, this place is, uh, pretty nice. Looks like the walls are melting. You look around at the stand and furniture and run your fingers along the couch. Oh, it's warm. In fact, the whole place feels really uncomfortably warm and humid. Hey, do you think we could turn on the AC or something? It's uh, a bit hot in here. It's a little hard to focus. Do you absolutely love this house? Uh, it's a little early for that. I haven't even seen any of the other rooms. Uh, I don't feel very good. Can I sit down? Oh, by all means. Make yourself comfortable, dear buyer. You stumble ahead, the room spinning around you. You grab onto the couch to steady yourself and see the walls melting around you. Uh... uh w w w what the hell? Oh, what's the matter, dear buyer? Or my guts alarming? Please don't fret, I promise it'll be quick enough. My enzymes will be sure to knock you out before the digestion process has become too unbearable. You're not a real estate agent, you're a house! What, what are you... You try to steady yourself, but Baison grabs you roughly by the throat and throws you down, pressing you hard against the floor. You try to vain to keep yourself propped up, your eyes growing heavier and your nostrils filling up with the sickly sweet smell engulfing the room. Just relax, dear buyer. You're going to make my value skyrocket. He was pressing his body against you hard, making sure your face was against the floor. It was warm and kind of soft. You started letting your eyes slowly close as tiredness and the sickly smell lulled you asleep. Maybe this wasn't so bad, you thought. You were so tired and just didn't want to fight anymore. You could feel a stingly sensation against your exposed skin, burning you slowly, but you didn't have the energy to fight Maison or the house anymore. Or maybe you should say, Maison, the house, because, you know, the word means house. You finally let your eyelids drop, breathing in slowly and deep for the last time as the house slowly digested you. You died. Housewarming. Get it? Maybe head to the cafe this time? If you gotta go any longer without eating something, I'll collapse. Coffee also, sounds, coffee also sounds pretty great right about now. If I make your way to the nearest cafe, it's small and quaint, you can hear the chatter of random patrons inside. You slowly step into the cafe, taking in the smooth, rich smell of brewing coffee and the sweet scent of baked goods. It makes your stomach growl even louder and prompts you to rush up to the counter and place your order as quickly as you can. After placing your order and snatching up your dinner for the day, you scurry over to the fervorous table, away from anyone else to scarf them all down. The coffee is thick and strong and slides down your throat slower than you expect. It's an odd sensation, but strangely not bad. The cake is an equally odd experience. You decide on coffee cake, but the flavor seems to be different with every bite you take. It makes it hard to get used to eating it. There's also strange hard bits throughout it that pop and sizzle like pop rocks, but taste like cinnamon. You're so hungry right now, though. Is it like the food here will like all be all weird? If it was like John Doe, also. You just deal with the weird food and focus on just getting it all in your stomach as quickly as possible. As you're focusing on your food, you don't notice the older looking man sit down at the table in front of you. Oh. I didn't notice you, uh. Hello. Can I help you? The strange man adjusted his burning red blazer and cleared his throat. His movements were so odd and stiff as if he was made of cardboard. You're new in town, lost and wandering. You need a place to call your own. The way you talk surprised you. His voice was so smooth as if he's given the same speech a million times. He has. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Maison Talo, number one realtor in all of the Uncanny Valley. I can help you find your dream home today. He quickly snatched a business card from his breast pocket, only for a never identical business card to pop up and take its place. He offered it out to you. I think this is somewhat the same scene, but there is a couple more endings, so I'm trying to figure where the branching is going to be at. Is he uncomfortably, uncomfortably close to your face, making you flinch back at me before taking it from him? Give me a call and he'll get you up in a new house today. Guaranteed. 
Okay, I, I should tell you, I already have an apartment lined up, so I don't think I'm in a place to be buying a whole house. <laughs> That's quite alright. I'm sure you'll be giving me a call. I am the number one realtor in all the Uncanny Valley, after all. I have never had a disappointed buyer. Dead buyer, so. You'll love the house I found just for you. I'll be waiting. The strange realtor walked away before you get a chance to argue. His long legs carry him faster than you expected. He just shrugged and pocketed the business card. No harm in holding on to it in case something happens with your new apartment. You quickly finish up your food and beverage, making sure to leave a nice tip on the table before heading out to the apartment. So I think this is going to be the same, I'm probably going to skip ahead. So let's give up here. You sigh, but ultimately the signs appear to just be patient. You know what the company I'd be going through right now. Thank you. Please give me a call when my apartment is ready. Yes, of course. Have a good day, you. With that, they hung up and left you standing in front of the building. You should have already been in by now. Shoot, now what? You shove your hands in your pockets absentmindedly and feel the hard piece of paper crunch against your fist. Okay, I think it's going to be the same. Skip it. Skipped ahead. Let's just call rather than going to the hotel. Yeah, I don't see the harm in blowing and some time looking at pretty houses I'll never afford. At least it's something to do. No answer. So much for being the number one realtor in Uncanny Valley. Ah! Hello, and thank you for your call. Are you ready to see your dream house today? W were, were you just w waiting here for me to call you? How ridiculous. I am simply the best in the city, always waiting for a prospective buyer's call. I am always ready to show you to your brand new life. Being dead, that is. This guy was starting to worry you greatly, but he was already here. You'd be rude to ask him to leave. Change your mind. Actually, I think I might just go look for a hotel. I'm really trying to make you come all the way out here. I'm just not interested in buying a whole house yet. He stared at you for several uncomfortable moments, the sickly grin seeming more full of malice than it previously did. Finally, he brought his hands from behind his back, straightening up his coat even more and adjusting his little house sheet lapel pin. I will be waiting for your call, my dear buyer. And with that, he turned and walked away briskly. It felt relieving to see him finally leave. Now you can finally get back to figure out what you should do next. Make money. Lots of it. You finally arrive in the Harvest Sea, the sounds of the city ringing in the ears and developing you. You're thankful the Uncanny Valley isn't a huge city and has a warm, quaint feeling to it. You begin to search the many building signs for a hotel. Finally you find one sticking out like a beautiful white beacon. You rush in quickly and ring the little bell for the service and check in. Oh, actually got a hotel. You finally find your room. Tears filling your eyes upon seeing the big soft bed nestled in the center of the room. You quickly shed your shoes and jump on top of it with your entire body, letting yourself slowly sink into the plush mattress. Ah, oh, I'm so tired. I can't wait to sleep in my own home. But right now, this is the best feeling I've ever felt. You slowly let yourself drift off, your body feeling as if being enveloped by a warm marshmallow. You think about where your life is going and smile to yourself knowing that you made it. As in you. Do you have an apartment waiting? You would all by yourself and... The gas station approved your application. You lived. Checked in. So this is a prequel, right? I'm gonna go with him. Yeah, I mean, there's no harm in going with him. He's just trying to do his job, right? You may be a bit pushy, but realtors are always like that. Alright, Mason. Let's go look at this house. Oh, I knew you would choose the right answer, dear buyer. Let's go right there, then. The house is simply dying to meet you. I don't think that pun quite works the way you think it works. What? Before you could do it, probably ask him why he phrased it so oddly. You let them roughly grab you by the upper arm, drag you along with him down the street. So... We basically have gone back to the house here. I've skipped ahead a bit. 
Um, and our interactions, I think maybe I've been a little different. Maybe we'll get a little different ending. We'll see. Go inside. Skipped ahead a little bit. That means, if it skips ahead, it means that's the same dialogue, essentially. But I stopped it here. Oh, this place is pretty nice. Look around at the stand-in furniture and run your fingers along the couch. You shakily stumble over to the couch, your hands helplessly grasping at the warm lever. You gasp surprise as Maison grabs you by the shoulders, guiding you to the middle of the couch and helping you sit down. You try to steady yourself, rubbing your head in an attempt to stop the sickening vertigo. Can we maybe crack a window or something? It's getting really hot. I don't know what's wrong with me. Hmm. You know something that's a terrible shame, dear buyer. You glance up at the room still wobbling around you. It became more and more difficult to stay upright. What? I was beginning to enjoy your company. It's not often I find such a responsive buyer, and it does become awfully benign, simply eating everyone who comes over. Your eyes have difficulty processing the melting walls around you, becoming more and more organic and even meaty in texture, and you start to notice a strange, sickly sweet smell you hadn't noticed a moment ago. Breathing in makes you even more dizzy, and you slowly slump down the warm, fleshy-like couch. Eat? Ah, oh, yes. You're new in town. This must be very confusing for you, correct? That's alright. You don't need to talk. I will simply explain the situation. After all, I am Uncanny Valley's number one realtor, and I have been doing this for a very long time, though it's been decades since I found someone so receptive, and the other folks here in the valley hate explaining anything. A very lucky chance you met me first. You can feel Maison crawl over you into the couch. His hands placed carefully next to your head as he leaned in close to speak in your ear. You felt extremely warm to the touch as his skin brushed against yours. You see, dear buyer, being the number one realtor comes with its responsibilities. I'm not like the other realtors, you see. I take great care in what I do, unlike those who simply want a quick snack. So every realtor in this town eats you, by the way. It's become so hard here in the valley to find buyers. The other realtors have taken to simply snatching and running. Quite barbaric, wouldn't you agree? Maison gently cupped your cheeks as he spoke. You were shocked as he was being so kind. You could feel him nodding your head for you in agreement to what he was saying. No. No, my value is much, much higher. I only find the finest buyers to incorporate into something much greater than themselves. I can't just have any tenants eat now, can I? I have my standards, and I will not stoop to such low behaviors. You weakly nod your head your yourself with his help, not entirely comprehending what he was saying or talking about, his words sounding further and further away as your body grew heavier, and it felt as if you were sinking into the meat of the couch. Sinking into the meat. Hmm. Oh, I just need you to understand. I suppose since we're getting over so close now, I could drop my own facade. It does get it tired controlling this, oh, but quite handsome, cumbersome little lore. You watch as Maison's eyes grew dimmer and his body fell limp, still being held up by something, but his limbs no longer retaining their rigidity. Are you just like a tongue? Well, I mean, it's kind of like an anglerfish, right? But like, you know, since you're inside, I'm assuming you're the tongue. Quite impressive, isn't it? With such an attractive lure, it's becoming quite easy to bring such tasty prospect of buyers the old-fashioned way. I suppose it's just my luck to be so gorgeous, naturally. It's clearly no wonder how I became the number one realtor, right, dear Spire? You literally watched as Maison was yanked backwards and up towards the fleshy lamp on the ceiling. He dozed the umbilical cord like rope protruding from his neck as he hung there limply. You wanted to scream, cry or anything, but your body was totally paralyzed at this point, and all you could feel was the growing burning sensation as something hot slowly seeped through your clothes and onto your skin. I truly wish I could make the digestion process slower than this. I truly do, dear Aspire. I would greatly enjoy some simulating conversation. Alas, this is how it simply is, and always has been, and I have not eaten in quite some time. Perhaps in another world, another time, we could spend more time in each other's company. I'm sure you understand that one must eat, though, and I'm truly grateful to you, dear buyer. Maison's voice was no longer coming from his limp, lifeless body but instead sounded as if it was coming from the very walls around you. You could hear him sigh wistfully, and the walls looked as if they were breathing along with it. I will always think of you, 
long after you've become part of me. You finally allowed your heavy eyelids to close as you sunk deeper against the warm couch. You could feel the meaty fabric of the couch moving to cover you up in like a soft blanket, almost tuck you in as you let yourself slip into a sleep you'd never wake from again. You died. Offer accepted. Wander aimlessly? I think it'd be fun to get the lay of the land today. Just a little walk around the area to see what's around and all. After wandering for a good hour, you find yourself at what looks to be a business district. You check to see such tall skyscrapers in such a small city. You find a comfortable bench to rest and drink some water, watching the businessmen scurrying past you on the sidewalk. Huh. They all look pretty similar to one another. You notice one of them looks more out of place than the others. Instead of the hyper-focused gaze that marks their faces, he looks... sad. You wonder about him for a moment. When suddenly a very tall older gentleman stands directly in front of you, turning over you and staring directly into your eyes. Hmm. wonder if that was foreshadowing something. I'm assuming this is all gonna be the same for right here, though. You sat on the bench for a little while longer, you notice that businessman you were contemplating is gone now. You sigh and push yourself off the bench and make your way to your new home. Because that was like foreshadowing something. So that's it for House Hunted. Um, we learned a valuable lesson, and it's that if the house or apartment is too good to be true, it most likely is, and it's most likely the inside of some kind of weird mimicking organism that eats people. Um, and then you should never trust real estate agents. Because they are also some kind of organism that eats people. Apparently. So, I guess this is possibly a prequel to John Doe. I, like I said, I haven't played the Plus version. Uh, YouTube doesn't quite like that character too much. So I, I can't theoretically continue the John Doe series. But, speaking in relation story-wise to that one, I'm assuming this town, and I'm, I'm assuming this is some kind of weird... Eerie Indiana, like, Goosebumps, Twilight Zone, whatever city. That's a parallel to probably San Francisco, I'm assuming, or uh, Seattle, or one of those kind of places. Except everyone's weird, and this whole town is out to get you. Which doesn't sound too out of the picture for those cities. But on a more serious note, yeah, that this looks like this place is full of monsters who have almost... Not quite meta powers, but just like... The best I can describe is they have power over... Not just their physical self, right? Like, the real estate agent house... Could port their puppet anglerfish thing anywhere they want almost instantly as soon as I reread the card. Almost like they were like, everywhere. There was no sense of physics or anything to them that was kind of supernatural. And the fact they mentioned, like, oh, yeah, all the real estate agents in here, like, we're all, we're all monsters that eat people. And the, even the fact you know it's like the food's a little weird when you like, come to eat here, probably means, like I said, this town is not normal. It is a. I'm not sure if it's a trap. I'm not sure if it's just a weird place that sometimes people go. Who knows? But it's well timed, conceptually, you know, with the current housing market. To the point where I'm like, a bit surprised. I don't think you really see people using real estate agents in horror stories too often. Like slashers and stuff like that. I'm sure maybe it's done, been done at some point, but uh, it, it's usually like more like office people, right? Usually it's office people that do things. If they're, they're playing with someone mundane, like a janitor, um, office people, a groundskeeper, maybe like a teacher, like a principal, stuff like that. that that's usually what they use. But real estate agent? Not so much. You, you'd think actually it would be a perfect setup for a uh, horror antagonist. Because if you think about, like, even just, let's say, from, like, a grounded horror perspective, a real estate agent would be like, oh, I'm hiding the bodies in the different houses I, like, I'm selling, and all sorts of little stuff you can, like, get up to on that concept. But, yeah. Anyway. So, thank you all for watching play House Hunted. I'll see you guys later. And take it easy.